This is the first thing we do when you wake up. Grayson is no longer using a pacifier. So those are the fun educational toys we have. We're gonna start stretching his wake windows as much as he can handle. High five, mommy. Good job. Pajamas. Let me see them. Oh my goodness, Santa and a reindeer. Well, hi. Uh, <laughs> you're so cute. Yay. You love looking at the tree every morning. Huh. <laughs> That's the first thing we do when you wake up. See this one? Everybody. Welcome to today's vlog. I'm in Grayson's room. I don't know why I always say that. He's behind me. <laughs> Cutie boy. And behind me, I actually have some fun educational toys that we have for Grayson that he really loves to play with. And I thought that would be something good to show you guys today because he gets so much use out of them. And they're really not that expensive and they entertain him so much while also teaching him. So, I'll show you guys those and I also plan on within the next week or two filming a gift ideas for a one-year-old video but I have to order the gifts so I'll film that when they come in. Okay you guys so these are the toys this two that Grayson is loving right now. I think there's actually some toys. Oh they're under the eggs. Okay I'm gonna start with the eggs. So these little eggs seem so silly. Also the reason I'm filming up here <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm filming up here is because Grayson will get into these while I'm trying to show them to you. So, these are the eggs. This is what they look like. Looks like a regular carton of eggs. We open them and there's colors and shapes. So, it's a really good opportunity for them to match. Let me try to put this together with one hand. It's not going to happen, is it? Let me just set it there. Okay, so anyways, they have colors and shapes in them, and I just think they're so perfect because they're educational. Oh, I happen to get another purple. They're educational. Grayson loves to play with them right now. Honestly, he doesn't really do the color and shape part. We go through the colors whenever he op we open one. I'll tell him what color it is. We're not so much on shapes yet because he's just kind of not there. So I'll open one, and I'll show him the inside, and I'll say blue, and he knows, oh, that's the color blue. So I love these eggs so much. This may be a good thing or a bad thing to you, but it's kind of, <laughs> he's pulling on my pajama pants. It may be a good thing, it may be a bad thing, but it's kind of fun when you're looking for them because it's like an Easter egg hunt every day. <laughs> so you can either think that's a good thing or you might hate it. If you think that's a bad thing, you may not want to get these eggs because your child will throw them everywhere and you will be looking under every possible piece of furniture you can find to try to look for them. <laughs> These eggs are from Amazon. I will link them below for you. We just love them. The other thing I wanna show you, I've talked about in a previous vlog. Now, unfortunately, these are Love Every, so you cannot just buy these outright. I'm sure there's something out there that's very similar to it. But what I like about these is they have the texture. So this is actually like shoelaces. They're thick. You can see how thick that is. So they're perfect. They don't bend really easily in tiny toddler hands. 
but Grayson loves this one, and I go through them with him every single day. When he sees this one, a lot of times he likes to wave because he knows bye means wave because of that card. This is not part of the video, but this is a truck he loves that he got for his birthday. Here's your truck. He loves that truck. This will occupy him for a few minutes, hopefully. So back to the cards. So they just have all these different objects on them. He loves this one. He loves to pet the doggy. And he goes through and I just read them to him and it's all about repetition with the babies. So we just go through them every single day. He loves that one. He likes to feel the ball because it's a basketball texture. So cool. He smells the flowers. <laughs> the car goes vroom. You know, I'll do like sound effects. And then the moon. And we just go through these every morning when we're in his room. They even come in this little box. And honestly, they're so perfect. So that is from Love Every. I'm sure you can find something very similar to them that's not Love Every, but I'll link the kit that these came in for you below. The next thing he loves is this little stacking toy. It's very simple. My dad got it for him. He's obsessed with it. He is so good at it too. So every morning we do a few things. We read, we do his object cards, and we practice these. I literally will just have it like this, and you might see, might have seen in my last vlog, I was doing it with him. He's able to put these on there by himself. And as he puts them on, I tell him what color it is. So he's practicing his colors and he loves this part the most <laughs> but it's perfect and i've actually even tried to trick him and i'll hand him a cup upside down and see if he can do it and he flips it like that so we have those three things i showed this toy this dimple toy in the video i filmed last year during vlogmas for christmas gifts i was getting my two month old he obviously didn't play with it at two months old <laughs> it took him quite a few months to be able to play with this but he loves it now and when he does play with it, every time he pops one forward, I tell him what color it is. So another great way to practice their motor skills and their colors. And the other thing I'm sure you've seen is all the rage right now, poppets. This was really good when we went on our trip to Michigan. He loves this. So that's something we usually always have in the living room, along with the eggs and the dimple toy. And this last thing is this really, really cute puzzle. And what I love about this puzzle is they're very big pieces. You can see that compared to the size of my hand, but also the knobs are such a good size for them to grab onto. He's not quite old enough to not put things in his mouth yet. He's not past that phase. so. Sometimes I'll try to put this in his mouth, but yesterday, you guys, it was our first time doing this puzzle, and he almost put the fire truck where it was supposed to go. I was so proud of him. And I also have this puzzle that he got for Christmas last year for my sister-in-law. We work on this. I think we're going to start working on our letters soon. I think one of the gifts we want to get him is an alphabet puzzle, but I'll pick this one up and say, gee, and I don't want to overwhelm him with things to learn because obviously we do a lot, so I won't focus on more than one thing at a time, but this is something else we'll do that's educational and it's really, really cute. It's, I think it's Busy Puzzle. Yeah, <coughs> Busy Puzzle, so cute. Such a good gift idea too. So those are the fun educational toys we have. I will link them below for you. So my goal this year is to do a lot of educational, practical, Montessori-based toys for Grayson as far as Christmas gifts go because he does really well with them. If we can help it, we try not to buy him the electronic toys that sing and make a lot of noise. Because for one thing, but <laughs> parents, you know. <laughs> but when he gets them as gifts, we just, you know, he can play with them and it's fine. But us personally, we don't like to get him a lot of stuff like that. So, with that being said, I've been looking for a lot of toys that are like educational, good for fine motor skills. I want to start practicing the alphabet with him, so I want to get him maybe an alphabet puzzle. And so that's kind of the route that we're going to be going. Those toys, honestly, he enjoys the most. The toys that I showed you that are up behind me have been toys that he will play with over and over and over again, and he really never gets tired of them, especially those little eggs, you guys. Those eggs may be a pain because you have to literally have an Easter egg hunt pretty much every day that your kid plays with them. <laughs> But believe me when I say they are worth it. And now for the most exciting part of the vlog. Grayson is no longer using a pacifier. In last week's vlog, I mentioned that I didn't know how to wean him from it, if I just did cold turkey or what I should do. And then Saturday came and I was like, you know, Kevin doesn't have any calls today because it's a weekend. 
we can sleep in or do whatever we need as far as sleep goes if the night's really rough let's just do it let's do it i was researching why babies might be waking up at his age i was reading that it could be the pacifier and i really think that's what it was because every time i would come in here he wasn't even really awake you guys like he was like crying in his sleep because his pacifier fell out and so i thought enough is enough we just need to do it cold turkey first i'll preface with I was reading that the best thing to do is to introduce a lovey or a little blanket or something that's safe, of course, if they're over the age of one. That's a good replacement and keeps them comforted, just like kind of like a pacifier soothes them. So we bought this. If you're, you've been around for a long time since last Vlogmas, you know that Santa got this for Grayson in his stocking. And so I pulled this out of his little stuffed animal bin and gave it to him. And I let him have it for that night. I wanna say I gave it to him Friday night and with his pacifier, okay? So I did it with his pacifier so he could adjust to it. I mean, obviously he had his pacifier, but I wanted him to get used to this before I took his pacifier away. Saturday morning, the next day, I decided we're gonna cold turkey it. So I didn't give him his pacifier. I put him down for a nap with only his little elephant. And that was it. So I, gave him his elephant lovey and no pacifier the first nap he cried for 15 minutes before he fell asleep but he fell asleep and that was the goal the second nap same thing nighttime guys he didn't wake up once he slept the entire night didn't wake up and oh my gosh we even noticed that he was like less fussy during meal times because he was starting to fuss during meal times and it was just getting to be like stressful i was like what's going on what can we do what change do we need to make to fix this and you guys he's been a lot better during meal times daytime with the exception of yesterday today is day five without his pacifier <coughs> yesterday was rough he didn't, take, he didn't take a last nap I think that's my fault because I've been doing hour naps in the morning and two hour naps in the afternoon. But yesterday I had a migraine, so I let him have a two hour morning nap. He didn't want a nap in the afternoon, so not gonna do that. Make that mistake again today. So that's the update as far as his pacifier goes. No more pacifier. They've been sitting in that drawer since Saturday morning and we have not gotten them since. Although, I made the mistake of leaving two out on his little table that's right here normally. And he crawled over and went and put one in his mouth and I grabbed it really fast. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not doing that. And he was fine. He was totally fine. He's never been like super attached to his pacifier anyway. But he was starting to get attached to it when he sleeps. And so that was my concern that we were going to get to a point of no return where he was just going to be like so attached. It was going to be so difficult to rip the bandaid off. But I'm so glad we decided to just cold turkey it, not give him the pacifier starting Saturday. <laughs> And obviously, every person is different. That's what worked for us, but Grayson wasn't that emotionally attached to his pacifier. If your baby's a lot more attached to it, the transition could be a lot harder. But again, we did go to Michigan, and having that pacifier on the plane and throughout that trip was, like, crucial for us. So that was another reason we decided to let him use his pacifier past the age of 12 months. <laughs> Come here. The garbage trucks are gone. <laughs> Notice something different from last time? The tent is gone. It's in the closet. I put it away because last weekend I was trying to clean his room and I was like, okay, I cannot access most of his floor. <laughs> so I put it away, but I'm liking all the space that's in here now. And also I feel like the ball pit goes really well in here. It's so cute. Okay, so Grayson is down for his nap. It's gonna take him a little bit to fall asleep because you know, no pacifier. But I wanted to show you guys our family pajamas that we got this year for 
Christmas, but I bought them on Black Friday. I don't know if I'll be able to link them below. I'll link whatever I can below for you. This is mine. They're just like matching top and bottom. They're the thermal pajamas. I had the same ones last year, but with green and white stripes with a little red around them. Kevin actually has the pajama pants, like flannel pajamas, just, you know, classic pajama pants. He likes this pajama set a lot more than last year because last year he and I pretty much wore the same thing and he was not a fan. It was a little bit tight in certain areas. So then with those pajama pants, I just got him a t-shirt, a black long sleeve t-shirt. He can wear that any other time too, which is perfect. And then Grayson's is my favorite. I'm obsessed. I love it so much, almost more than I like the little sleepers with feet just because it's just so precious. I'm all ready for the day and Grayson is still awake. I'm probably gonna have to go in there and soothe him, lay him back down because I'm imagining him right now and he's probably sitting upright, holding onto the bars, jumping up and down. So I'm gonna go in there, but once I get him settled, I think I'm actually gonna start editing this vlog halfway through, which sounds silly, but like it will actually make editing tomorrow easier. So I might do that. I might just sit down and start editing this. Catherine Manning has been doing that in her Vlogmas vlogs. And so I'm like, I should try that. I think that's actually a really good idea since I do film a good chunk of everything in the morning anyway. Guess who didn't nap? He had only been this been awake three hours yeah i just don't really feel like that's enough time like i feel like maybe he should be pushed to four hours but here we are at like four hours and he's still not really that fussy <laughs> so that tells me that maybe we need to stretch like four and a half hours so we're, we're gonna do that we're gonna start stretching his wake windows as much as he can handle it's just gonna be trial and error honestly i think but he was not tired at all and he just was like trying to play and he wasn't even really fussing. He just didn't want to sleep because he's like, I'm not tired, mom. So I got him up and I gave him a snack. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wants that microphone too. Big time. But yes, yeah, so we're literally just hanging out in here again because <laughs> he was not ready for a nap. I'm gonna see probably at 11 if I can put him down, but I don't know. And I also don't know if it's time to drop him to one nap. I guess from the ages of 14 months to 18 months old, that's time to my arm because he's pulling on me. <laughs> Sorry. I guess between 14 to 18 months old is the ideal time to drop them to one nap if they're showing signs that they're ready. So I don't really feel comfortable fully dropping him to one nap yet because I don't know Like I want to first start with the wake window and stretching that wake window and then go from there but yeah, I just it sounds like He definitely needs a longer wake window And I think that's why he was fussing yesterday and why he's been starting to fight his naps because he's just like Hey, like I'm not tired and that's just That's just what's going to happen. So I guess we're just gonna have to roll with that but yeah, so I will update you guys on how that goes. I'll probably try to put him down at 11. It's 10.30 right now. He woke up at 6.30, so we're at four hours since he woke up. I don't know. He's climbing all over me. What are you doing? What are you doing? But I don't... Oh! What are you doing? So, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is. I'm just gonna start with the wake windows and hope that kind of fixes things. Cause I think stretching him six hours, one of the suggestions was like four and a half to six hours for a wake window. That's crazy. So I'm gonna start with four and a half because sometimes his wake windows are three hours and that's really big to double that. So I'm gonna start with four and a half since we're at four right now and go from there. But yeah, that's the update. <laughs> You did not nap. Oh, also, I did want to talk a little bit about the cup he's using now because it's not that munchkin cup anymore. And that's only because he was literally throwing it and breaking it. And so he was on his second one. I'm trying the Lalo cup. The only problem with the Lalo cup is he can pull the straw out himself very easily and then just turn it upside down and it all pours out. 
So what I do like about it though is it's small. So it's not too much liquid for him at once. He's able to hold it really well. It's silicone. It will be able to be used as a transition cup. So he'll be able to use it without the lid, without the straw when he gets a little bit bigger. But it is a little bit of a pricey cup. So don't buy that cup thinking it's not going to spill because your baby will definitely make it spill if they can find a way to make any cup leak. They'll definitely find a way to make that one leak. <laughs> um, but that's what we're using right now because I thought that might be the best option. And I just kind of have to guide him with it. I can't leave him alone with it or else it will end up all over his lap, whatever's in the cup. <laughs> so yeah but i wanted to tell you guys about that because i know that he was using that this morning and that's not his normal cup so yeah we like it but definitely not spill proof look at those teeth look at those teeth oh my goodness <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> see you guys tell me that kid's ready for a nap <laughs> He's so happy. He's not ready for a nap. <laughs> what are you doing here, sir? What are you doing? Object cards? Let's do your object cards. Okay. <gasps> Shoes. Shoes. Can you feel the laces? Feel the laces. Yeah, those are shoes. Books. Look at all those books. We always read books, huh? <gasps> moon. That's the moon. You want to touch it? <gasps> Leaf. There's leaf leaves in the trees, leaf. You did such a good job with your cards today. Yay, Grayson, can you clap for yourself? Clap, go yay, clap. Yeah, good job. Baby's in the forest. Let's go exploring with the babies in the forest. Can you pull this down? We read eight books. High five. Can I have a high five? High five. Uh, high five, mommy. Uh, good job. Yeah. It is lunchtime, and before I feed Grayson, I wanted to show you what he's gonna have. So I just made up some macaroni noodles with some pasta sauce. He's been loving these lima beans or edamame, I don't know, whatever they're called. He loves them. And then the mini meatballs because they go well with the pasta. Hi. We are going on six hours since he woke up this morning, and he's just now starting to show. Oh. That's what I meant about the straw, by the way. He literally pulls it out. <laughs> so anyway, he is just starting to show signs that he's tired or sleepy cues. So I think he may go down now. Hopefully he'll be good. It's 12.05 right now. So hopefully he will go down easier than he did this morning. <laughs> he definitely seems to be tired. So I think he'll be, he'll be good, but Crossing our fingers for that. And also, I said that he was gonna have two naps. He just spilled the water. But obviously, <laughs> he's looking like, Mom. Okay, we'll clean it up. But all I was gonna say is, he obviously is only gonna be able to have one nap today because it's already almost 12.30, so there's no way he can take a two to three hour nap and then have another nap. That's just not possible. So we're gonna see how it goes with a long wake window and one nap today. Crossing our fingers, it goes well. Pull this 
little boy's nap and lasted like 40 minutes. He woke up screaming and screaming. And I went in there, tried to soothe him. And then finally Kevin went in there and he's like, you know, I think that there's something going on. I don't think he's just fighting sleep. This poor boy is just teething so hard. So, you can touch the camera, say hi. Yeah, good job. So I just think that we're in that season of really bad teething. <laughs> and his naps are gonna be as long as he's able to go. So we will just have to work with that. But I'm gonna end the vlog here because he just needs some mama cuddles and some time chewing on his teethers, huh? But I really hope you guys enjoyed watching today's vlog and we will see you next time.